Hello, everyone. I'm Mike Kenichi, and welcome to another edition of Valley Sports Rewind. And I am very honored today because we have a legendary high school player, athlete, um, was a member of two state championships with the Ansonia Chargers in 2006 and 2007. And then he would go on to play at Yale and have a stellar career there as well. And we're joined by Alex Thomas. And Alex, I want to thank you for coming on today. It's a real honor. Thank you, Mike. I'm glad, happy to be here. So, Alex, let me ask you, you know, I was thinking about it today. You were probably maybe five, six years old when Aunt Sonia had that run in the 90s in the 94, 95 teams where they uh, won back-to-back state titles. But when did your love for not only football, but Aunt Sonia football begin? Hmm, that's a good question. I, I would say definitely not at that point. I would have been a little too young to to have been following football. Um, I really didn't start becoming interested in football until I was about nine or 10 years old. Um, I started playing when I was 10. Um, and basically the interest was my brother, Ryan, um, who preceded me at, at Ansonia. He, uh, he started playing. So naturally they, yeah, as the younger brother, I'd wanted to do the same. Um, so that was right around the age of like nine. So 1999. Um, and, and Sonny had some good teams around that time so, right. as well. So let me ask you this, though. Even though you weren't really into football yet, did your uh, parents take you to football games when you were a kid? I mean, did you, do you remember going, like, at six, seven years old? Not really. Um, yeah, none of – yeah, not not really. I'm sure I may have gone to an Sonny High School game at one point or another. Um, I know some of my older brothers went to um, – a I think it was like a Patriots game or something. Um, right. But I was a little too young to go at the time. And that was kind of like my first experience with football. Um, and then um, I think the first Super Bowl I remember watching was in like 97 with the uh, the Patriots Green Bay. Packers, right. Um, so, yeah, before that, I, I definitely didn't have a love for football at that point. But that was kind of like the beginning. And, and uh, right. a lot of my friends were starting to get into the to the sport as well so and you know a lot of kids who've come out of ansonia derby seymour shelton their parents grew up there did your parents grow up in the valley or were they not from the valley yeah so my mother um grew up in the valley she spent a lot of time in um kind of bouncing around her family moved around a lot but she went to ansonia high school at one point um she went to seymour at another point and then to not i think she finished her her last two years of high school at Nanawag. Um, but her family lived in the Valley for, right. for most of her high school years. Um, but they weren't from Ansonia or right. Ansonia necessarily. So, so you really didn't, really strong tie. you really didn't know the history of Ansonia quite yet. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So there were no, no like older, like uncles or like parents who, who played for Ansonia or went to, uh, to school in, in town um, growing up. So it was definitely uh, kind of learning the culture as I was growing up. Right. Now, did you uh, did you have interest in other sports, though, as a kid before football? I mean, was there a certain sport you liked? Yeah, so I, I definitely, I think my first love was soccer. Um, probably a combination of soccer and baseball. I, I played soccer. Soccer was the first sport that I was old enough to play. <laughs> and I, uh, being the youngest of, a bunch of siblings. I always saw them running around in the yard with friends and wanted to to do what everyone else was doing. So, um, first chance I got to play an organized sport was was soccer, and I I loved it. It was an opportunity to to run as fast as I could, right. which is something that did me served me well over the years. Right now, did you like basketball or baseball at all? I mean, did you play those? So I played. I played. Um, I loved basketball and baseball i was terrible at basketball (laughs) um so i wouldn't say the sport loved me but um baseball i i was an okay baseball player um i think i wish i i that's one sport i wish i'd played in high school um but i just ended up playing football in high school but i played baseball up until eighth grade um and wish i had spent more time batting cages and kind of just working on the the technical details of the sport but um yeah to this day, baseball is still one sport that I enjoy watching right. in addition to football. And, you know, you, you talk about baseball, and I know he was a very good Little League player, I think even Babe Ruth. So your future teammate, 
uh, what was his name? Was it Dan DeGennaro? Right. He he played baseball probably around the time you did, right? When you were kids. I mean, did you know him well in school back then? Or Yeah, yeah so we, we went to different uh, elementary schools, um, but wound up going to mead school and then to middle school and whatnot together. But we played sports, basically. I think he was probably on my first football team when I was 10, and we were were either on opposing teams in baseball and basketball or on the same team growing up. Um, and then eventually we're, we're teammates in high school. Um, and, you know, I remember what I remember about him is him being a fourth grader, maybe fifth grader, and he just had a rocket arm. I mean, from center field, he could throw the ball to home plate, and that's unusual for yeah. a kid that age. So, I mean, your group of, you know, classmates definitely had a lot of athletes in it back then that, you know, I'm sure the Ansonia coaches, you know, had to look forward to seeing come up. Yeah, I, I definitely would agree with that. And I mean, Dan's one one example of of, of many, and he was a special talent uh, and and good at every sport that he played. And right. he he definitely developed early and uh, had just a knack for 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 most sports. And um, yeah, and was was a good sized kid. So basketball and football were. We're, we're definitely he was well suited for those i don't think he played basketball in high right. school though I think baseball yeah and football um but yeah for to have him as a team it was definitely i definitely was glad to not have to go block him on the <laughs> on the edge and in, in high school especially right so now your brother ryan played for ansonia and correct me if i'm wrong i could be he he was a member of a couple of those state title teams was he not the 2002 and 2003 ansonia team yep so he was he graduated um the same year as the Kenny Tinney and, uh, so and that, that group. Yeah. So he graduated so in 04. Those teams. Let me ask you this. Um, you said you kind of got into it watching him play. Is that correct? Yep. Right. Yep, that's right. So let me ask you, before we get to you, you know, playing Pop Warner or AYF, whatever it was at the time, what was it like going to see those teams play? I mean, Kenny Tinney, he was an unbelievable athlete. I mean, you really had to like love going to football games back then. Yeah. yeah. I mean, one of my favorite things to do was – was watch them um and ryan and kenny were my heroes growing up definitely um definitely looked forward to friday nights and seeing what they were going to do uh just looking back to the those teams those two championships that they won um their junior and senior years back to back in 03 and or 02 and 03, 03 right um they were definitely phenomenal but but more one thing that i remember even more than those that uh, giant them. I think it was their sophomore year. Um, a game up at Seymour. It was just a back and forth battle with kick returns being right, right. being brought back by Kenny, and then Seymour had a bunch of good athletes that year. I think Seymour made just, the playoffs that year. Yeah, too. Seymour. Yeah. I think they might have won a, the state championship that year, if if not. Um, and they were definitely, arguably, a better team than us. But uh, we ended up. I think there was like a a last minute uh, fumble return for a touchdown or something like that, and it was. It was definitely an exciting game to to have watched and made me even more excited to be a part of the Ansonia program in a few years. Right. Did seeing your brother, you know, because the other thing, too, is when you're a young kid, these high school players are like rock stars, too. I mean, seeing your brother, you know, with the jersey on, you know, going through all the pep rallies and things like that, did it really make you want to be on that football field that, by that point? Absolutely. Yeah, I think... Um, <laughs> that was definitely something that occupied most of my thoughts growing up in, in middle school and just like I couldn't wait to right to have the opportunity to, to do what they were doing and uh be in their shoes someday and I just hoped that my career would have been as successful as as theirs and I knew I had a lot of as we were talking about earlier a lot of uh great athletes in my class so we had a lot of potential to have some success on the on the football field um and in other sports as well so but yeah just uh when you're a middle schooler, kids in high school seem like they're twice your size, and right. it seems like, yeah, they're they're celebrities definitely in, in Ansoni at least. Right now, you said you were was it nine or ten years old that you started playing? My first, My first year of football, I was ten. Right. So let me ask you this: you know, there's been a lot of debate over it. Looking back on it now, and you're somebody who's an adult. What age do you think a kid should really start playing football? Because to me, and maybe I'm in the minority, but I really believe 10 is a little too young now. I think a kid should probably not play till they get to at least maybe 6th or 7th grade. 
So it's definitely a hot topic. And I mean, growing up, concussions weren't really a thing and they weren't talked about um, really until my sophomore year of college did it become like a hot button issue. Um, so it's definitely something I've put a lot of thought into and I definitely don't think I would let my children play at 10, but, um, I think a lot of it has to do with just proper technique and, um, fundamentals. So if, if I had a kid that wanted to really wanted to play and, and was mature enough that I felt he would be able to follow directions and instruction from, from coaches, then I would consider, I would also probably want to be around and, and making sure that the the techniques are being followed and kids aren't like ramming heads right, uh, right. On, a, on a daily basis and that the coaches are are following proper protocol and um i don't know i would i would have a hard time i think it would be one of those things that you don't really you can't really make a decision until you're you're in those shoes unfortunately i don't have a 10 a, a year old who's asking me to to play um the sport so i don't have to worry about that um, and yeah, so I, I don't know. I, I think that middle school, even high school is probably a good time to, to start because I feel like you're, you're mature enough and, um, mostly just able to follow instructions and, and yeah, I, I, I think, I think 10 might be on the younger end for of the spectrum for, for organized tackle football. Right. So now. That first week of Pop Warner, or was it AYF at the time? Because it was Pop, Pop Warner, Warner, yeah. So let me ask you this: What was that first week like for you? And I always say this that the, you have to take that first hit, and that's going to decide if you're going to stick around. Because some kids don't want to come back once they take that hit, and it usually happens in practice. But let me ask you: What was the first week like for you? You know, putting on the pads and stuff. It was. It was, it was really, really exciting for me. Um, I, so I got to play when I was 10. I wanted to start playing the year earlier when I was nine. Um, but my mother suggested that I wait one more year until I was 10, which in looking back was, was, was definitely, I mean, a good thing. Yeah. Um, so I was just full of excitement and I think, yeah, contact definitely has something to, it's, it's not for everyone. It's a, it's definitely a pretty brutal sport in, in terms of, the the hitting and some of the drills that we did um they definitely ease you into it at that age i would say but um looking back at some of the drills like the the shed drill where you're you're taking on somebody that's sprinting at you and you have to kind of use your shoulders and arms to to shrug them to the to the side um just kind of like teaches you how to absorb contact but at that age it's interesting because everyone's around the same weight but some people or some of the kids just develop so much faster than others. So, uh, they're able to seem to hit a lot harder than, right, than, right. than other kids. So, um, and just thinking back and, and growing up with a kid like Dan Deej, as we were talking about earlier, he was right, always right. someone that was <laughs> dreaded to face in, in a shed drill or, or something. He was a, he was a tough, a tough kid always growing up. Um, in addition to dozens of others that I could think of that I never wanted to go against. Right. But, um, yeah, I, I got over it. I think the, the excitement of being able to carry the football was something so that you were running back right away. Yeah. So I was, I was a running back and played some defense. I think it was like defensive end at that time or cornerback. I don't know. Um, but I was always just excited about the, the offensive side of the ball and, and being able to, to, to carry it. So I, I tolerated the other parts of the game in order to, right. to get to that. Um, and now did you, uh, start your first year in Pop Warner? I mean, did you, I did. I did yeah. So uh, I played, I played running back. Um, I was a starting running back and I also played, um, some quarterback. I was the backup quarterback. So they would, but it was basically like a third or fourth running back on the field. Right. right. I think we ran the T formation at that time. And, um, we, uh, we, yeah, I think I maybe threw, may have attempted one pass, but it was mostly just quarterback sweeps. Right. right. <laughs> And uh, and how exciting was that first game you played in? I mean, was it, you know, sometimes your first game could be great. Sometimes, you know, it may not be great because you're still learning. I know it's a long time ago, but do you remember the first game, what it was like for you? Honestly, Honestly I don't really remember that that much about that. Those, those early years other than just glimpses of 
finally being able to right, like the excitement of finally being able to play um I remember scoring a couple touchdowns um at that point my brother would was he in a freshman and no he wouldn't have been in high school yet right so maybe he was playing with the midgets maybe yeah right trying to think back right i can't replace you what know, year that would have been I i've said this many times on many shows is i really believe though pop warner is where it starts and that's been a big reason why ansonia has been so successful because they've had great people running their pop warner programs and you know that's really where you guys are learning all the basics you know because once you get up to high school the coaches don't have time to spend a lot of time teaching you technique you have to kind of know it yeah and that definitely goes back to the whole discussion about when is the right time to right to to let your children play football and yeah, it's a tough answer because that whole the truth behind what you just said kind of complicates the issue because you really do need to start at a young age to 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 get the the fundamentals and to learn um, right pr- proper technique and just the basic rules of the game and um, yeah so waiting too long you might have right. missed the missed the ship and I don't know I'm sure there are other ways like flag football or other sorts of non contact right. So now let's get to freshman year. You know, like I said, a big reason Ansonia has been so successful is their Pop Warner program. And then I really have to credit Coach John Sponheimer because he's been coaching that freshman team since, I want to say, 1972. So, I mean, you know, you're talking 50 years of coaching. Talk about, you know, freshman year playing on the freshman team and playing for him. So freshman year was – it was definitely – a memorable season um we we went undefeated um i actually a funny anecdote from that year i actually didn't start um on offense that year oh wow um, <laughs> i was a backup i was a second string fullback on on that team so there were and we ran a wishbone formation so there were two running backs who were very talented athletes and good friends at the time um and and still um lorenzo Pittman and and Willby Martin, who right, were the right. two tailbacks. And then we had a fullback who was about 250 and just about as fast as me, um, Rashad Bass. At, who would at also play varsity as a freshman, yeah. too, correct? Yeah. Right. Yeah. He played defense for Ansonia, right? Yep. He was another special special talent <laughs> that we, we had and uh, definitely a credit for a lot of the su- success. Now, that did we, you start on defense that year? Or? I started on defense, yeah. I was an outside linebacker. Um but yeah, was playing for for Coach Sponheimer, it was definitely <laughs> other than wanting to touch the ball more. Um, it was definitely great. I mean, he had a such passion for the game and just for developing young talent um, and just teaching these young kids the Ansonia way. And um, definitely. Now, were you? Was it upsetting to you not to be able to be in the backfield freshman year? I mean, was there a part of you that felt like packing it in at all? Or actually, yeah, definitely. Um, that was that was definitely a, a tough a tough year for me. Um, psychologically, I, I was I felt like I was good enough to be touching the ball more, but the guys that were toting the rock were having lots of success, so there was no real need to to change things up. Um, so. Yeah, I was in, in defense. wasn't really I wasn't really passionate about playing right. defense. Um, and I, after my freshman year, I didn't play another down of defense really in, in high school. Um, but yeah, I think there were definitely times where I wanted to to pack it in. But I I also now were you able to carry the ball somewhat freshman year? Yeah, yeah. So we were really good. So there were lots of games where they would take the starters out and. I mean, I would, I would rotate in at fullback right. here and there. Um, so I, I got a good amount of touches, and I got some touchdowns, and it was a lot of fun, but it was just... Now let me ask you, did, did a part of you think, you know, am I ever going to see the backfield in varsity? Because if you're not start, if you got, you know, classmates starting over you, was there a part of you that said, you know, I may not see the backfield through, yeah, in my high school career? Yeah, so I think... Um, there definitely was a part of that. And I think there was definitely a pressure that I put on myself just in fall, trying to fall up in my uh, brother's shoes. Um, he had a ton of success playing fullback at Ansonia. Um, and I wanted to 
be like him. So I felt like uh, if if I wasn't gonna be able to start um, on freshman, then starting on, on varsity and living up to some of following it up and, and kind of some of the things that he'd done would would not be a, a possibility. But um, yeah, I think that was also a, a form of motivation just to to work hard in that off season and and get in the weight room and um, work on my speed and just do everything I could to to make sure that I I, I see the playing field one day. So let me ask you this now, you know, I always ask this question because it can be a little intimidating sometimes it's, you have your first winter meeting and you know, for the upcoming football season, now you're going to be a sophomore. I mean, were you a little nervous because now sophomores always kind of take a little razzing from, you know, the seniors, the upperclassmen. I mean, that first meeting you guys have, were you nervous at all during it? Or do you just think, you know, as a kid, you never really kind of like paid attention to that? Yeah, I think um, I wouldn't say that I was nervous. I think maybe the social aspect maybe made me nervous. I think uh, those who know me well know that I'm I'm definitely on the quiet side, and uh, I think I was probably just a little insecure socially. Um, so maybe that, but I, I definitely had confidence in my my physical ability to to do everything I needed to do. I felt like I was just as strong as many of the upperclassmen, and if not stronger, and um, just as, as, as physically able. So now this se- your sophomore season would also be the final year for coach Jack Hunt. He had announced, I think he announced two years prior that, you know, he was going to coach these last two years and this would be it for him. So let me ask you, you were fortunate enough to play for him. You know, you were a sophomore, but w- before we talk about just the season itself, what was that season like for him and knowing he was leaving? I mean, did you ever see like a change in him at all as far as like, did he ever let up or was he the same coach he was from, you know, day one? I definitely wouldn't say he let up. I, I, th- I think he, um, he wanted to go out <laughs> like he came in as, as a winner. And, right, uh, right. he, uh, unfortunately we, we couldn't make it to the playoffs that year. Um, but we, we were a team with a lot of young kids, a lot of, yeah. a lot of young kids, um, in a class who, kind of got there were there were a lot of talented athletes in the the senior class but um they were following up a one of the best classes in ansonia high school history um or one or two of the best classes um so guys who didn't really get a ton of playing time in, in early years um were now leading the team um but i think we all wanted to to send coach out on a on a high note and um and we definitely fought hard and and had a lot of unexpected success. I would say, I think we did better than some people might've thought we would have done. And I think if I'm not mistaken, you guys started the season one and two, you had a tough loss to Holy Cross, then Watertown, but then you had a great win against Seymour later in that year, you know, which really sparked the team. So let me ask you, what was sophomore year like for you? And were you finally getting, you know, into the backfield? Yeah. So, um, sophomore year was was great it was I definitely broke out of my my football shell um and I started from day one um so I I had a great off season I had great spring spring football practices and there's then uh coming into camp I was faster than I'd ever been and I was stronger than than I'd ever been um and there was no question that I was going to be the, the the starting running back that year, and um, I was just fortunate to have great teammates around me and, and a line who who <laughs> who opened up holes and gave me some opportunities to to make some guys miss and to outrun a few others. Um, and yeah, I think personally, I had a, a lot of success and became an all stater and all that good stuff, but. More importantly, it was just the experience of getting to play with 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 quality Ansonia people. Um, some of the upperclassmen um, definitely gave me a lot of confidence and um, just made me realize what how, how special it is to be a part of the the Ansonia football tradition and culture. And to have gotten to overlap for a year with. Um, for a year on varsity with with coach hunt was was great he's definitely an intimidating figure and, and, and you someone... saw varsity time a lot that year correct yeah. yeah 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 so i mean you were 
you went from a kid who didn't start in the backfield to starting, you know, at the varsity level as a sophomore. I mean, did you did you feel good? I know the season wasn't, you know, record wise what you guys wanted, but did you feel good personally that, you know, the best was yet to come for you, that, you know, you got you worked hard and now you were in the backfield? I think more than that, it was a year that a lot of people saw a lot of great things from a lot of young kids um, who are going to be great players in, in the next year or two. Um, and so a lot of my, my classmates got a lot of playing time that year as well. Um, and a lot of people kind of had the, the same similar awakening and, and excitement about what, what was to come um, during our juniors and senior years. Um, and yeah. Now talk to me about, before we get to your junior year, talk to me about coach Hunt's final game against Naugatuck. Number one, he was always, you know, a laid back guy as far as like, he wasn't emotional. Now he could get emotional on the field sometimes, but he never really got emotional after games. He, he, you know, less was more with him. He didn't really have to say a lot to you guys to get you fired up. But what was that last game like for him? Did you see any emotion after the game from him in the locker room? Could you tell that, like, you know, he realized this was it and, you know, he was happy to go out the way he did? Yeah, I definitely think so. I think um, the, the team was maybe more excited than he was to have been able to pull off a win up at Naugatuck on a, <laughs> on a sheet of ice. Right. Um, and it was a Friday night, too. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was a Friday night. The Thanksgiving had gotten rained out or snowed, snowed out right, or something. Right, yeah. And then the field was a, a sheet of ice that we played on on the Friday night. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there are memories of him being carried off the, right. the field that night. Um, I don't think we dump, we were cruel enough to dump any uh, any water or Gatorade on him. Right. But um, guy's size, size, you probably didn't want to take that yeah. chance. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I remember just him being all smiles and kind of like a, a sense of relief um, in, in winning his last game and um, kind of solidifying his legacy as, as one of the great Ansonia coaches. Um, yeah. So now junior year comes in. Listen, from the get-go, they were predicting big things for the Ansonia team. But sometimes when you predict things like that and, you know, teams kind of can have a letdown sometimes because they're they're thinking it's just going to happen but you still have to go out there and play the games but I'm and it was also a coaching change coach Brockett went from being the offensive coordinator to the head coach now and I'm sure you spent a lot of time with coach Brockett your sophomore year but let me ask you I mean how was obviously by the record we know how it was but how was the transition going from coach Hunt to coach Brockett yeah it was it was completely smooth um (laughs) so I remember a sort of funny anecdote about um right after coach hunt had finished the last game we were in the like we'd started our weightlifting season and um i'd gotten interviewed it was one of my earlier interviews um and a reporter asked me how i felt about this transition and i was i didn't say this verbatim but the the vibe kind of came off as if i had said like in with the out with the old and with the new sort of thing (laughs) right um but uh, Coach Hunt gave me a hard time about that. He, since he still worked in the school, and I saw him on a on a daily basis, it's like right. you know my my old school uh, ways is what gave you however many yards you had that that sophomore year, that old school running. Right. Um, <laughs> but you know things didn't change. I think Coach Brackett kind of picked up exactly where Coach Hunt left off, and um, Coach Brackett was kind of running the offense as it was uh, during during my early years, and it was pretty seamless transition i think um it's it definitely had to have been tough for for coach brockett to to come in as sort of a not an non ansonia guy and stepping into a role after coach hunt especially a role where you're in a no-win situation because you lose a game they're going to be all over you you know and if you don't win a game like they feel like you should have they're going to be a little harsh but you know i i think back to the second game of the year against woodland where I think you guys were ahead at the half, 40 to nothing. It might have been, you know, maybe 30, 35 nothing, somewhere around there. But there was nothing left in doubt. And you guys come off two straight losses to them, you know, back to back. So I know you guys were playing with that energy. But you could just tell from the start that this team was going to be special and nothing was going to stop them. Talk about that 2006 team and how special it was. 
Yeah, I, I think that team was the best team that I played on in, in high school. We we had a combination of of two classes, the class ahead of the, the class of two thousand and seven, um, with guys like Kyle Shortle, Sean McGowan, Taylor King, um, and a dozen other guys who could have played college football um right. in at a number of schools. Um combined with, with my class with Eric Corasia, Rashad Bass, Dan Deej, Lorenzo Pittman. Um, some really, really, really talented group, um, or two really, really talented groups with guys who, who at any other school or many other schools in the state would have been the, the best guy on that, that team. And we had them all. So it was, it was definitely a special group. And, um, we came in, I, I think there was a pressure on all of us. We, we knew what we had. We knew we had a really special group, but we also, knew that nothing is ever given um, because someone says that you're special doesn't mean it until you go be special. So um, we kind of took it a week at a time. Coach Brockett was, was, was really, really good about, about preaching that and um, making sure that we weren't getting ahead of ourselves and um, that we, we handled adversity the way that it needed to. Um, And just thinking back to the prior year when, when, we lost to a good Watertown team, but we, a game that we shouldn't have lost, um, just based on mistakes and, and kind of the lesson from that. And then, um, the loss to Holy Cross. And there was just a lot of things in the back of our minds that, um, we, we'd learned from getting to actually play in some of those games, uh, the, the prior year and, uh, things we didn't want to repeat. Right. And, you know, it just seemed like you guys never really had a tough game that year. I mean, you guys kind of coasted the entire year. I mean, that has to be a good feeling, too, because, you know, you like competition, but you also, you know, it could be stressful sometimes. So it had to be a good feeling for the team because most of your games were over by the half. So the other thing was, too, is he could rest the starters, and it could also give an opportunity to the kids who are working hard in practice, you know, as well as you guys are to get time. So just talk about the way, like it seems so easy that season. Did you feel that way too? Um, I wouldn't say, say easy necessarily. I, I would say that, um, there were the closest game that we did play in was against Holy Cross in the NBL championship. And that was probably one of the best games that I played in high school, um, against one of the best teams that we played in, in high school. Um, that, that Holy Cross team that, junior year um and yeah I don't know I, I think um it definitely was a good thing to 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 be able to confidently know that you're gonna that you're in control of, of a game but um yeah I have a hard time memorizing remembering all the all the scores but I know that a number of our games were were definitely um we were dominating and that's been the case for many and Sony teams over the years. Um, you know, it's hard to remember every game, but I, I'm sure you remember one game in particular where, you know, you had 518 yards and seven touchdowns and you also broke the school record, which ironically was set by your brother, Ryan. Talk about that game. I mean, looking back on it, I mean, you were a kid, but 518 yards in one game. I mean, you had to just be like, oh, my God, how the heck did that happen? Yeah, you know, that was um, my senior year. I think those are two different – I think I broke the the school record my junior year. But the right. the, the single-yard game, that was um, that was senior year against Woodland. And it was kind of a case where Up at Woodland the score too, was – No, it was actually oh, in Ansonia. Oh, it was in the okay. Um, but it was a high-scoring game. Woodland kept scoring, so we – the starters ended up playing most of the game that that day, which was right. kind of unusual for for us um, in in most games. So I got a lot more touches and opportunities than than normally would have. But you know, it didn't feel like 500 yards at the at the time. Um, were you tired after that game? I'm sure you were passed out. Correct? <laughs> uh, I'm sure I was. Right. You know, it's it's hard to remember exactly how you feel. But um, you know, I I had such a good team surrounding me um and an offensive line that that just 
<laughs> blew guys apart and uh, made made my job easy. So I kind of just maybe ran ran a few more times than I normally would have, um, and was fortunate enough to somehow come out with 500 plus yards um, at the end of the day. Uh, but it definitely didn't feel any different necessarily than than other games. Um, I think I exerted just as much energy. <laughs> right now, talk about the New London game. Um, I believe it was New London. You played them in the state championship. Yep, game. yep that was the that was senior senior year. Yep, or was it junior year? Was it Sen- senior year? Senior year was New London. Yeah, Bloomfield was Bloomfield, the, the junior right. year. But talk about Bloomfield junior year. Um, number one, what was the feeling like? Because you know, you guys were definitely the favorite, but until you do it, you're not gonna really grasp how great it is. What was the feeling like to win a state championship? Yeah. Um. I mean, I I feel like we had we lost the game, we would have been very, very disappointed because we knew that we had every ability to, to, to beat anyone we played. Right. Um, and we believe that. Um, and yeah, just thinking back to some of the earliest football memories that I had, um, was listening to Ansonia playing Bloomfield in like the, right. the mid nineties and Bloomfield blowing Ansonia out right. and kind of just thinking about those blue Bloomfield teams. Um, they had pros on that team. I mean, it was <laughs> yeah. just a tremendous team. Yeah. 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 Um, so there was definitely sort of a, an intimidation in, in that sense because Bloomfield's got a great football, a rich football tradition and, uh, and history. Um, so definitely not a, a program that you want to take lightly. And, um, they, they, they were tough watching film on them. They, they had some really great athletes. Um, and we knew it wasn't going to be an easy game and it definitely wasn't, but we had, I think we had, like I said, that was the best team that I played on. Um, right. we had just so much depth and, and, um, basically we could throw the ball, we could run the ball and defensively we can stop anybody. So, um, we, we fortunately did that and right. and beat a very very good Bloomfield team. But um, yeah, the the feeling afterwards was it was kind of one of relief. I think um, me personally, anyways, I I go into every game like it's do or die. Yeah, right. yeah like it's do or die. You don't want to win. If you if I were to lose a regular season game, I'd be in tears. Right. <laughs> and same thing with a, a a playoff or a championship game. You you never want to lose. Um, and then when you win, it's just a kind of like job well done. That's what you, you expect kind of, um, especially I think being part of the Ansonia tradition, there's kind of that expectation on you. So it kind of, I wouldn't want to say that it taints the, the victory, but, um, I think there was more of like a a relief that we, we got this done. This is what we set out to do from day one and, uh, we did it. So let's, let's, and you know, you know, so many, you know, accolades happened for that team. You guys, for the first time in 17 years, Ansonia was ranked number one in the state. So that had to be a tremendous feeling. And then you guys were also invited to Walter Camp. And talk about the Walter Camp experience because that had to be wonderful for you guys. Yeah, so I think, um, so first I'll talk about the uh, us being number one in the state. I think um, that was that was probably the hope more than, than anything um, in and in that Bloomfield game, we, we knew that not only did we need to win, we needed to win and not give anyone a reason not to give us the number one vote. Um, so, yeah, we were fortunate enough to to, to do that. And um, just looking back four years earlier, my, my brother's junior and senior year when they I would say their senior year, they they probably they were number one, and then they, they were gave number it one, to and then New they Britain exactly later in the season. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I don't know. I, I watched. I went to the different state championship games that year, and no one was quite as. I'm obviously biased, but no one was good as, as good as those teams. And being able to actually pull off the number one ranking was it was probably more exciting than the actual championship itself. Um, I'm definitely very proud of us, our group of of guys for for accomplishing that. Um, but yeah, um, the Walter Camp was another tremendous event. Um, and I want to say that's where I met, I think, uh, Mike McLeod, who was the Yale running back at the time, um, got honored at that banquet, um, as like the, the Connecticut collegiate athlete of the year. Um, so I'm not sure if that's where I met him for the first time, but that was when I was really 
thinking that Yale was going to be the the college that I was going to go to, um, assuming that academically things worked out. Um, but yeah, being being in Yale, the the commons at Yale, and in in a room with hundreds of people with tuxedos on was definitely a, a unique experience. Definitely something that many <laughs> many of us growing up in Ansonia had never never done. Um, uh, and it was an awesome night and getting to share that with my teammates was, was really, really cool. I think that was probably most of our first time wearing tuxes and many of our first time on, on Yale's campus and, um, getting right. some autographs from some amazing <laughs> college athletes. There was, uh, it was, it was really, really, really great. Right. So now senior year comes and again, you guys have everybody coming back basically. And then you added another player because Tom Hyde left Derby and he came to Ansonia. So that's another good lineman you guys were blessed with. You know, I think he was a junior at the time. So the pressure is to win the state title. I mean, let me ask you, I mean, did did that ever, I don't think pressure got to you, but did you always think, oh, you know, we can't mess the season up or we're never going to hear the end of it. Did you go into that season like thinking that way? Yeah, I think um, there the, the expectations were definitely high and there was lots of, lots of added adversity and um tom coming in definitely was 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 a godsend i think um he he was a guy that i mean you're coming from derby and coming to ansonia or leaving derby and coming to ansonia so you're naturally an outsider um but tom's just such a great great kid um and he became a really good friend um and i mean everyone really took a liking to him um he he was a natural fit um and definitely helped solidify that offensive line that senior year um but um yeah i think some of our offensive weapons we had some some diversity um one of our our best wide receivers slash running back um wasn't able to play that year um so we were we were down one of our probably our most athletic athletic person um so there was some added adversity there, but I, I think we we still knew we had a, a core group of of people who who were capable of winning every game that we played. Um, I don't think we were quite as deep as we were the year before, but um, we had some really good, talented guys who were a year better um, than they were the year before. So um, yeah, there was definitely a pressure, um, and I think there was an, there was definitely a cockiness at times, but I think we we all knew that we had to check ourselves and make sure that we, we didn't let a single game slip, slip away. And, um, yeah, there was a really close game against Seymour. One of the, probably the, right, right. the other great game that I played in, in, in high school, um, against a really good Seymour team with lots of talented, uh, talented kids. Um, and won some, the state title, that they won a state, close, uh, yep. you know, as well. Let me ask you this, you know, if somebody told me that a kid had, 40 touchdowns in their career, I would say, wow, that's off the charts. If somebody told me they had, you know, say 2,000 yards in a career, I'd say unbelievable. You did that in a season with 47 touchdowns as well as over 3,000 yards in a season. Let me ask you, I mean, did I know you're a very humble person, but you had to feel good to do something like that. And, I mean, it, it, it's a credit to your line because, you know, they help make that happen too. And sometimes the line doesn't always get the credit it probably deserves for, you know, any team because the linemen do a lot of work. But what was that like for you to just, you know, have a season like that? Yeah, you know, it, it feels good. It feels good. Um, or it felt good having reporters run up to you after your game or um, contacting you during the week to, to request interviews or um, stories. Um, but I don't know. I was just really, really fortunate. And, um, I never, I never really thought anything of it. It was kind of, did you ever think back to freshman year and say, wow, I wasn't even a starter, you know, on offense and here I am, you know, senior year and I'm shattering records. I mean, that had to make you, you know, I remember Michael Jordan when he was in high school, he was cut by his freshman team mm -hmm. and, you know, you weren't in the backfield freshman year. So, I mean, it's a credit to how hard you worked because the only way it was going to happen for you is if you worked hard. And even though maybe it didn't start out the way you wanted, it ended pretty good. Yeah, definitely. Um, it was, 
it was definitely something. It just kind of became a natural thing. Um, and I'm not someone that loves the center to be center of attention. Um, so getting used to, to that, it was kind of just, I don't know. I never <laughs> tried to think about it too, too much. Um, and I think I, I mostly just wanted to present myself in a, in a way that was being a good role model to, to the younger people who I knew were, were looking up to me at the time, just knowing how much I kind of idolized some of the, the guys ahead of, or, or in the time before me. Um, so I, I think more than anything, more than <laughs> kind of feeling good, it was more just trying to use my platform to, to, to do some good. <laughs> right. Now, season ends, you win a back-to-back state title, which that had to be tremendous. And then another number one in the state again. And by being number one, it gave Ansonia the most number ones in high school football. So that had to be a great feeling. You had said the year before that was the big goal too, was to get the number one rank. And you got it two years in a row. Just talk about, you know, what the feeling was like for those things. Yeah, I think, um, so our junior year, I think our goal was probably to win a state championship. Um, but senior year going in, we were touted as the number one team in the state and the goal was to be number one at the end of the year. Um, obviously winning a state championship is part of that goal and winning each week, um, convincingly was another part of the goal. But, um, at the end of the year, we wanted to be at Walter camp again as the number being honored as the number one team in the state. Um, so there's definitely a, a pressure and as we know, the Connecticut playoff system isn't perfect. And, um, there was, room for us to to be voted as not the number one team in the state even if we didn't lose a game so I think it was an extra thing in the back of everyone's mind to 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 make sure that we we won convincingly right and you know you end your high school career you make register all state three years in a row and then senior year you, you receive the honor of being the player of the state and you talk about people that have done that in Ansonia you know Stephen Coughlin um you know, um, Sandy Oshesky, you know, Roger Ings. Um, just talk about what that feeling was like when Coach Brockett told you, you know, you were awarded player of the state. Yeah, I think, um, you know, it all feels good. Anytime you're honored, it, it feels really good. Um, and just knowing that all the hard work that you put in um, pays off. But I think more more than anything, it was just a tribute to – to the coaches who, who, who gave me the ball 40 times a game and, uh, to the, to the line who was opening up holes. And, um, I tried never to, to, to take the credit because I knew that I was just in a very, very fortunate position. I'm probably not the most talented running back or necessarily athlete to, to have ever come out of Ansonia, but I definitely played during one of the best, best spans of, of Ansonia football. And, um, I was just very, very fortunate to to have had all the the opportunities that were were given. Now you know you were going to expand your career. Obviously, you would go to Yale, but was there did was there a sense of sadness because you knew this was this part was ending? You were on some great teams, and it's Ansonia football. Were you a little sad to see it end? Yeah, absolutely. There's nothing like playing football in a town like Ansonia, um, and we talked about it in the beginning beginning of this conversation just about pop warner and uh and other other sports where you're just growing up with these these guys and you're playing organized sports and these become your your brothers um so entering into a world of of unknown and and going off to college um without those guys was definitely um definitely challenging um or um it, it was going to be a big big change and i was definitely had a had some feelings of sadness in, in walking away from all this and um having to kind of reprove myself on a different stage right so now you go to yale and i mean you know people forget too that you weren't just a great athlete you were a tremendous student too which is very important because a lot of times too jocks get stereotyped that they're just jocks and they don't care about grades but you went to yale which again you, you there's, there's no scholarship. You have to be, you know, academically good to go to Yale. 
freshman year, you know, you played a lot of JV and had a great JV year. But sophomore year, you found yourself in the backfield as, you know, getting a lot of time. And in fact, if I'm not mistaken, I think, uh, you know, you led the running backs with like 14 catches. You know, you had 286 yards for the season. Just talk about your time at Yale. How fun was that playing in the Ivy League? Yeah, um, Yale Athletics is, I mean, Yale University is a special place and the, the Yale Athletic department is a, a special place um within the university um and playing for another program with such a rich history um i mean yale football is is about as old as it gets did you ever um, get to meet carm coza or? i i did get to meet Car- carm um when i was an undergrad and on several occasions after graduating but um yeah he was always always very very kind and had kind things to say and offered some right. some great advice and it's really sad to to hear about losing him this this past um December I fall, yeah, yeah. This 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 winter. Um and thoughts have been with his family. Um but, but yeah, being being at Yale was uh it was it was a huge adjustment and um it was just an honor to have gotten to <laughs> to take snaps with, with such a storied program and it had to be a thrill to play in the harvard yale game i mean yale princeton i mean those are rivals and i mean it had to be a lot of fun for you yeah and you know you don't appreciate those things as much when you're in the moment but in looking back it's so so cool to think that i was i was in a bowl with sixty thousand people watching um me take carries um against it. and you know you got to experience a rival because let's be honest i mean seymour and woodland they were rivals but the big rivalry for Ansonia was always Derby, and you were not able to play Derby because they had taken away that rivalry for a while. So you got to finally experience a big-time rival again. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was. I mean, it's definitely a, a different kind of rivalry. It's not like you're you're playing against guys who who live up the street, right. um, who you who are stealing your girlfriend or whatever it might be. <laughs> right, right. Um, so there's, there's not that same kind of bad blood, but it's, um, it's definitely like you don't want to lose to Harvard mostly because the, the pride that's involved with everyone around the, the, the game, all your classmates and all your, uh, all the alums who, who come back for and, and hope that you win. So there's, there's that kind of external pressure. Yeah. And you know, you had a tremendous career at Yale. I think you were second team second all Ivy League two years in a row. And then, I mean, your senior year, this had to be a great honor because you were awarded the uh, Jim Kempel Award for uh, offensive back of the year. And, I mean, that's the thing because a lot of times you could be a great high school football player and it doesn't always, you know, materialize in college. Some people just aren't, you know, college players. But you were able to be successful on both levels. That had to be a great thrill for you. Yeah, you know, I – I've thought a lot about that and I'm definitely proud of what I was able to accomplish at, at Yale and just really happy that I, I chose to go to Yale. Um, you know, in the, in the moment things are a lot different than they are in, in, in hindsight. Um, I think I definitely, after coming out of Ansonia and having such, had, having had such success and notoriety there going to Yale and, and maybe not having as, as much of a storied career as I did at Ansonia was maybe disappointing in a way, but um, it was still uh, uh, an opportunity to be really, really proud of. Right. right. Experience. And, you know, you had, I could think of, um, you know, your game against Columbia where you had 137 yards rushing. So, I mean, you still kept going. I mean, you still were an impact player. I mean, you know, what let me what was the difference between high school and college for you like especially you know the Ivy League too if i'm not mistaken correct me if i'm wrong they don't allow you to hit as much in practice correct um yeah there are extra rules in surrounding the Ivy League um in terms of practice but um yeah you're i i think there's probably like i i think the rules have changed even since right. i played I mean, did you? What was the toughest adjustment? Was it because you know you're used to an offense in Ansonia? Was it was that probably the toughest? Is getting used to the type of yeah? Offense? I think it's it's learning the plays, learning the personnel, trusting your line, 
um, and realizing that you can't run around people um, like you did, could in high school. People are a lot faster at that level, um, and that, I think speed is the biggest change from high school to college. Um, and the playbook's a lot bigger, and um, there's a lot more to think about. And yeah, right. And um, let me ask you. When it finally ended, I mean, if you do the math, you probably played 13 years of uh, football. When it finally ended, you know, that last game, you know, of your college career, again, was there sadness or at that point were you ready for a change? I I definitely had a lot of sadness. Um, I was I was in tears after right. <laughs> my last few carries of that game. Um, so it was definitely... I mean, looking back on my whole career, basically, <laughs> right, coming to an end. So let me ask you, Alex. Um, before we go, if you could be remembered for anything, I mean, you don't seem like the type of person that's about yourself. It's more the team and stuff like that. But I mean, what would you want to be remembered most, more than anything else? I would say, as as a scholar athlete, um, as as a, a well rounded. Um, athlete who who realized that there was a lot more uh to, to life than than football um and i i just hope that a lot of people who or a lot of the young men who who've played after me um kind of use that as an example and and just kind of thought about using football as as a tool to 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 get you um, whether it's to college or, or beyond, um, but um, it's a tool to, to something else. Um, and um, yeah, basically just raising that awareness. Now, would you ever want to coach someday, whether it's college or high school, or are you pretty much set with that as far as that goes? Yeah, so my, my current field um, is college athletics. I, I work at, in administration at at Yale now um, in the athletic department, actually. And um, I think athletic administration is a really exciting career with lots of possibilities. Um, I wouldn't say that I'd want to coach necessarily. Um, I think I like the the, the broadness of, of working in, admin, in administration and with numbers. Um, but I could see myself coaching some youth football uh, in, in the future. Um, but Probably not in, at the college or high school level. Well, Alex, I must say, um, this was a lot of fun, and you know, I remember your career a lot, and didn't really know you, and just seeing the type of person you were today just shows me that you weren't just a great athlete; you're a great person. And what you did at Yale and what you did at Ansonia, you're one of the real good people in athletics, you know, in life. And I really do appreciate you coming on today. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Thanks. Appreciate that. I've had a lot of fun, too. And that was Alex Thomas, the great running back for Ansonia and Yale. For Valley Sports Rewind, I'm Mike Canici saying goodbye, everyone. (laughs) 